Hello everyone and welcome back to the mobile home restoration. Today I'm going to see about taking down some of this front little addition here. See how easy it comes apart.
I wanted to take this down in pieces, pull the, the roof off first, because they had a double roof on there. We got the one off. But uh, it wants to go in one piece, and it wants to take the bottom deck with it, which all has to go. I was going to try to leave this bottom deck until, so I could walk in here bringing sheetrock and stuff, but it's not really that big of a deal. And if it wants to come off this easy, I mean, why not just take it down right now? I hope that the, I'm not sure what's gonna happen with this part, but I'm gonna pull on it a few times. And I mean, I can easily take it down by, you know, piece by piece, but if it wants to come down in one, I can just take the boom and crush the whole thing up and it won't be a big deal. Pulled the window out so I don't have to deal with broken glass. Took out the light bulbs, cut the wires. Should be good. Well, it's a big mess right now, but it already looks better on the outside. Get this, I'm just going to kind of leave this here for now and then when I get a dumpster. I want to make sure I have enough for the dumpster since we only get it for one week. So that I can just stack everything in there the one day and they can come and get it even the next day, it doesn't matter. And right now I'm just playing with the electric. This would have been the original box and then this is the main that comes in and feeds this box. And they had a 20 amp hooked up to a wire that was just cut off, so that's nothing. I got rid of that. And this is, was for the dryer, which was out in that front part is where the outlet was. And now that we're going to put it in what was the second bathroom here, I'm going to try to get this wire pulled all the way through because I, mean, I can use the same thing if it's long enough and just reroute it eventually. Now with that electric box being attached to this wall, I was hoping just to unhook this and stick it over here uh, because I would like to move this over too and widen this out so refrigerator can go in here and then this would just be in, you know, like a uh, pantry type cabinet. 
The thing is, I'm guessing that this wall's got a lot of electric wires going through it. So that could hamper uh, my plan. Uh, right now I'm just going to get this, try to get this dryer one out because that goes through here, through the shelves, into the furnace area. I want to pull this off anyway because there's electric here. I see there's one electric line that goes right down here. And that's not the one that feeds the, the furnace. So the furnace one is in the wall here. I mean this is going to go back up again. But I want to yank this out just to see what's going on in there. I wanted to yank the whole works out so when I tear this floor up here, because this is one spot where it's a little bit soft, so I wanted to tear it up here, tear it up underneath the furnace so we can get the new furnace in. But I, you know, kind of got to take one thing apart at a time because you can only do so much. Instead of unhooking the wire nuts, since there's four of these that have blue wire nuts on them coming out of here, I'm sure that the other furnace is the same. I'm just going to snip this and then I can kind of match these two with the other ones when the time comes on the other furnace. So this is for, well, this is where the furnace vent went. I don't know if this is, I suppose it just pulls air from that cabinet and this is like the cold air return. Don't know why they don't put it. We saw pictures of another um, mobile home that was beautiful inside. They, they, it was for sale. And the vent did this and this one up here, which is completely blocked off on the back side, were in the exact same place. So. That must be originally why they were there, but it's just weird because in your house you always put the cold air return as close to the floor as you can because that's where the cold air would be. But I'm sure they had their reason. So usually for a refrigerator, they're around 34 inches, unless you get a big one. Um, so we would want a 36 inch opening. Oh, I already have that marked out. So this is where that wall would have to go. I could easily move that over. Just cut the floor up, scoot that over. I think that's what we're going to do. I really want the refrigerator over here because I can't move it toward this wall. It's going to get in the way of that doorway. As it is now, I have it marked right here. 
that this would be the corner of the refrigerator. So that still gives you plenty of room. I mean, and then of course, I believe that this door I have to make wider into a 2-6, so I need a three-foot opening basically for that. So this wall, actually a little bit more than that. So that wall is going to end up being back here for the pantry. And then the refrigerator would come out here. That door would open in, play a room to get to the door. And then you also have to think of with cabinets, they stick out from this wall. So if I were to have a refrigerator here, I have this marked. I don't know if the camera is, can see that, but here's the fridge. If I were to run the max amount of cabinets, they would come to right here. Well then, you know, you don't think about that when you're framing stuff up, that you'd have a walkway between here that's, you know, 24 and a half inches. So we would definitely move these cabinets over. I have it marked here. So we get 35 inches between there at least. I might even go a little bit more. I know in one of the initial videos we had talked about putting the refrigerator here because that's where it used to be. Maybe doing a refrigerator stove next to it. And then we talked about having refrigerator, countertop space, put the stove over here. But then Melissa and I were out here talking and if we can put the refrigerator over there, I mean this isn't a big building. It's only two steps to the refrigerator. And that gains you 36 inches of countertop space and 36 inches of full uppers, you know, for storage because this kitchen isn't real big and it's like if you're in the camper or the fifth wheel or even in the farmhouse is the worst. There is no countertop space. You've got your the sink, about this much countertop space, stove, and then you've got this much countertop space on the other side of the sink in the house. I, there's crap on it all the time. You know, there's just nowhere to put anything. And, and it was just, you know, on the fifth wheel and Melissa had to live in there for two years. It was really tiny of an area. So any little bit that you can gain just makes it so much nicer for setting stuff on. So that's why we decided if it was all possible, let's put the refrigerator over there, free up a little more space in the kitchen here. And I think we can actually do that without it being too bad. As long as I can pull that out and then sop it over the top of the refrigerator, I can actually, since those wires are so far back there, because they're going to be all the way back into here, I would just have to sop it back here off, and it wouldn't have to be all the way out. It can be just softened out and up, and then the refrigerator goes in here. And then if I want to, I could even have a face frame that was out from it with a little bit of storage up there, or, or something. Or even nothing, but you still have room to set some stuff on top of your refrigerator. It just looks kind of goofy when the wall comes here, straight across here and down, and you have like a built-in refrigerator. Unless, you know, you've got this whole cabinet wall and you have raised panels above all of it and stuff. Otherwise, it looks just a little bit goofy.
that's much more manageable. Now it'll be easy enough for me to get in there. All I got to do is unhook the power, unhook the top stack. I don't know how the bottom works, but anyway, once I do that, I can lift up on the furnace and get it completely out of there. Uh, tear up the floor if I need to, and I believe I will have to because I, I want to rip it up in front of the front door anyway. And like I said, this here is soft right there. So just this whole little area right here. Put in new three quarter inch real plywood for the subfloor. Put another layer of the 716 silver. The stuff that I tear up will be like brand new. Well, that's enough on this for today. I think I'll go out and get on the mower and mow some grass. I'm out here this morning because uh, with this project, you know, we were just going over our insurance for the property this last week, just looking at, you know, with all the accessory buildings and and the cost of uh, everything going up, do we have enough coverage to cover all the buildings? So I looked into that and I actually upped it so that, you know, if a tornado came through and wiped out the workshop, all the garages, the chicken coop, everything, I would have enough money to have it all rebuilt. And I then talked to the insurance person and said, well, will this mobile home be covered under the accessory structures? And she said, no, it would not. <laughs> I need a separate policy for this. And I said, okay, not a problem. How do I do that? I don't have a VIN number or serial number on this trailer. In fact, when we bought the place, that was kind of an issue with the mortgage company and we had to go through some hoops. And anyway, the first thing they need is the VIN number on it. And this should have been the side that had the tongue. There's no plate inside the house. So, but right here, on the metal beam going across, because I think this is the side that should have had the tongue on it, there should be a VIN number or ever, all the information written in letters that are at least three eighths of an inch tall. So I need to pull this skirting off and see if it's on there. If we can't find the VIN number, there's no way to insure it. So. Um, anyway, it was like, we should probably halt everything and figure this out, make sure we can get it covered. I mean, they have to come out and inspect it, which they could do after it was, you know, remodeled, but there's no reason to go ahead and remodel it. If there's no way we can get coverage on it, you're just dumping money into something that, you know, you never, just never know. So anyway, uh, just another something that luckily I thought about before we go dumping a lot of money into it. I do have to say this much, when they did build this thing, they weren't messing around. All of this is done correctly. I'm really surprised because I thought it'll just come out and tear off the skirting. <laughs> no, they did it right. Well, trying to find the serial number did not work, so I'm going to integrate this video into the last video 
and uh, we're going to do a total change of plans. After Melissa and I were talking tonight, I think I'm going to tear the whole thing down. I just keep running into roadblock after roadblock with this thing. And I mean, <laughs> I can fix the inside and we had a budget on what we're going to do to fix it. Whole thing has to be sided. So I think what I'm going to do is come back here and build a whole entire brand new 24 by 32 house. I'm going to put it up on stilts, so I'll put 6x6 six six treated into the ground, start from scratch, build it all the way up.
now that everybody's wondering why are you watching me mow in the mobile home restoration video, ah, we remember I told you that uh, we were thinking about ripping down the trailer, and then another day went by and it was back to fixing up the trailer. But then, as we talked more, because you know this just it isn't just me. It's a 50-50 deal and there's a process that has to be gone through to come to an agreement, pretty much. And uh, the only thing is, I can fix the trailer cheaper than I can build a new building. Not a whole lot cheaper though, because almost just, I mean, the same amount of sheet supply would go on this roof that I would have to put on top of the trailer. Almost the same amount of uh, sheets of sheetrock will go into this versus in the trailer. But it boils down to two things. One, of course, we, I mean, I mean I'm sure there's some way that you could get that thing uh, insured, but they'd have to come out and inspect it. Um, it had to be tied down, which it's not. I don't, I, I really don't know how that works. And then HUD gets involved and it's just a mess that I don't want to deal with with a trailer that's that old. So basically we can dump the money into the trailer and it not be insured. And another thing with a mobile home, if we put the money into the mobile home, when it comes time for resale, that thing is a detriment to trying to sell. I think I already explained it. They had to do a different uh, mortgage or a side thing on the mortgage because the trailer's on the property. It was just a big mess. Anyway, any money that gets put into a guest house is like putting money in the bank. It will raise the value of the home considerably, of the property. Anything you put into the manufactured home over there is like renting. You're not going to get your money out of it. So, as of today, we're still going to build a new little building. I think 22 by 32. That's almost the same amount of square footage as the the uh, mobile home was. And if you guys have been watching the videos from the beginning, you know that right here was the original, this was a dairy farm way, way back in the day. And this was the original milk house. This is where they would milk the cows. And the milk was taken out of here. There's actually a, a hole here and a hole here where pillars come up. This is where the door was. And the milk would be brought from here. And there was a shed that was up behind the front garage. And that's where the milk the metal milk containers would go and the milk truck would come and pick those up. Well, this is, it's got a concrete foundation that's just breaking up. There's not, I, I looked at it, killed all this off a couple years ago and looked at it and I can't do anything with it. There's no way to fix it. And there's concrete in here for part of it and then there'll be the part that drops down where they would have got the manure and stuff out. So this is a perfect place to build this because I'm going to build this building up on stilts so I can have my flooring system really well insulated and stuff and there'll be a space underneath so I can get underneath to do some stuff like running the, the actual sewer line which can be exposed before going underground because that only gets buried down about this far. So this will be up so I'll be putting in six by six posts before here, four there, one in the center, one in the center and then there's going to be two down the center in, in the middle here. And I can cover this whole entire thing up because this thing is 16 by 28. I want to go 22 by 30 or maybe even 32. We're still trying to figure out how we can fit everything in. You know, kitchen, um, one bedroom, I think. First, we were doing two bedroom. And then I was talking to Melissa and I said, it's, it's, a, it's a guest house. Why not just keep it minimum? And even if there's a small room that you could have a bunk, you know, bunks in or something, that would be okay. And that could be the same room that there's a washer and dryer in. I don't know, but don't go too big or it's going to get too expensive. But you don't want a little tiny home either because you have no square footage, no place to live, you know, really. And winter here is seven months long, so you're stuck in this tiny little thing. So it needs to have some decent square footage. So anyway, that's the plan right now. I mowed this down by using the mower because I, I can't come through. I'll hit the cement. So I just kind of lowered it down to dump it down so I can stake the corners and be able to see over the top to measure.
I was thinking maybe the workshop building was the same as this old milking building, but as you can see, it's not. I'm way up here with the workshop and back here, so I will just create a point like right here for the back corner, and from here I'll measure everything off and square it. Okay, and I'll just keep, I had Melissa out here, we went in and picked all of, or a whole bunch of the cucumbers from the garden. And then we went on a buggy ride to run the dogs, and then she came out here and helped me get this measured the exact same distance from the building. I hate when I look on Google Earth and I look down and something isn't straight with something else like the garden over there. I thought that was straight with the house, but when you look on Google Earth, it's like at least two feet off from being square with the house. <laughs> Drives me crazy. So this has to be straight. So right here, this is 30 feet. I think I'm going to go to 32. Two feet doesn't seem like much, but if you think about it, everything comes in four foot or eight foot lengths. Everything comes out to 32 feet. On the roof, when I'm putting the plywood on, the building would have been 30 and it would have been perfect because 32 would have gave a foot overhang on each side. So I'll need a little more plywood on the roof, but as far as the deck, the walls, and all that goes, 32 feet is better, and I think two feet, I mean, that's, that's enough for a closet. So let's bring this out to 32. And we'll just do that. We'll do a 22 by 32 building. The nice thing with this also is since that cement foundation ends right about here, when I come down with the main sewer line, can come under at an angle and then I can go down. I don't have to go through any concrete to get underground to get over right there to the actual septic system. And I made sure, even though there's no inspections here, the only inspection that they'll come out and do sometimes is setbacks. And if I was a full foundation basement, I have to be 10 feet from the actual septic tank, 15 feet from, I call it the drain field, they, the leach area, whatever. If I am slab on grade, it's all 10 feet. And if you're doing columns into the ground, you can be five feet, and I'm plenty. I'm, do, I'm doing columns into the ground, and I'm at least 15 to 20 feet for sure. I mean, I am absolutely legal no matter what, so that's good. And like I said, I can come down, come under, dig down, and get right to it, and that'll be nice. Still keep my dump for the fifth wheel. I don't know, now's the time you think about everything, because if you screw it up right now, you gotta fight it later. Okay, everyone. Well, thanks a lot for watching. Definitely going to end this one now. This is the third time I've attempted to end it, and the story kind of changed, so I came back. We're definitely going to switch now from the mobile home restoration to the guest house. And all this needed to come down anyway. Everything was getting so rotted. So I can get this all cleaned up into a dumpster. We're not going to tear the trailer down this year yet. We'll probably wait until next year with that because it's in plenty good enough shape for me to store stuff in there because this project will run into winter. My goal is to get that roof on, get it insulated, get some heat in there, and uh, it'll be a nice wintertime project. And I'll have the trailer here to store everything in, and then next year we can tear it down. I will see you guys on the next video. Just one more thing on my list of things to do.